Good morning, everyone. It's 24th, April 24th, uh, around 8.30 in the morning. 20, about 20 degrees centigrade, perfect. I just walked in to the Bosque de Chapultepec here in the Mexico City. I'm about to meet John. John is a really special guy. He's a USA citizen, but he decided to live here in Mexico. He loves Mexico and he invited me to do a yoga class. <laughs> He's coming. Good morning, John. How are you doing? How do you feel today? Great. Great? It's a beautiful spot. Isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You usually do this every morning. Every morning? Yeah. Oh my god. I'm here around 8 o'clock and try to get at least a little 20, 25 minute meditation in facing the sun. Uh -huh. um, I was reading a lot that when the sun is red and it's just rising, that's when you want to really, really get in front of it and have those rays energize you. Okay, so right, right away we are going to start the, the yoga class. Just a little yoga. Okay. And um, I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> it's, it's a great place. I mean, once you get into the mood and you just keep on doing it, your body asks for it on its own. Before, it's a, body, it's a battle with the mind. Well, actually, my, my body is not asking this. I, I was just asking a, a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Where get... is my coffee? <laughs> well, if you get used to it, this is definitely a, a different kind of coffee. Yeah, that's you know, well, being honest, I took a coffee. I have, you I had, had a, uh, Yeah, I already <laughs> had a coffee, yeah. On your way? Yeah. On your way here. John, why did you decide to live here in Mexico? Why did I decide to live in Mexico City? Ooh. I don't think it was really a decision to come to Mexico City particularly, but it was a decision to leave where I was. And, and do you feel you, you are in the right place yes. in the world? <laughs> now I do. Now I do. Um, it took some time to realize that um, I was in the U.S. and I was I was tired of the corporate world. I felt like an automatic modern slave. Very well paid, but it's still a slave. I got home and I was super tired and I didn't have energy to do anything else because it was a sedentary job on the computer all the time, which is unhealthy, completely unhealthy. It was, it was working for, for Apple. Um, really? Really great company. They give you everything you need, um, but the lifestyle was just, did you quit a job in the Apple company? Oh my god. Yeah. It was, um, it's, it's like a dream for a lot of people to work in a big company. Yeah, until you realize that you're just a little, you're less than this. And if, you, if, if, that, if that piece goes away, nothing happens. They'll get another one. So you quit this company and decided to become an actor? I quit this company and decided to um, to get out of the U.S. and I decided to come back to Mexico because I had spent five years as a kid, as a teenager in Mexico, and I had friends here. I had met my friends from high school. That's when you uh, learn Spanish. Mm -hmm. so, so I already that's, knew that's Spanish. why you speak so yes well Spanish. <laughs> so I, I picked it up as a kid and I became really fluent as a kid. So by the time I left, when I was you know 17, 18. I realized that I wanted to come back. I didn't know what I wanted to do here, but I knew that I wanted to be here. And I knew that the culture here was more close to, to what I missed or liked, or I don't, I didn't know how to describe it, but I just knew that the move was necessary. I never really considered as a option, as a job. I never considered studying film or anything like that, or acting, um, but I knew that I loved movies production assistant, wardrobe assistant, assistant director, um, sound guy, I, I did the works. I worked with makeup, I worked with extras, I worked really? everywhere. You did all, all kind of, of them. works? All of them. I tried them all. Any, anything and anything that, that would give me a different perspective or whatever. They all, I tried them all and every time I did something different, I always had to deal with an actor and every time I dealt with an actor was like, no, nah, that's where I want to be. That's where I want to be. And it wasn't until Another friend of mine who um, who worked in the industry as a bodyguard for actors and directors and stuff, he called me out of the blue one day and said, Hey, John, you want to act in a movie? It was just, um, 
for, at, at the beginning, I didn't really know what I was getting into. I, I just thought of it as an adventure. Um, and it went by so fast, you know, it was four months of just super quick, super quick. Every day, you know, we're filming, filming and working Saturdays, you know, and Sunday would rest and boom, you're at it again. Um, but I was like, like I said, I was able to work with so many different parts of the, of the, of the production and just learn, 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 learn all the time. And as soon as the film was over, I just kind of stopped and stepped back and was like, what, what did I just go through? Like, what, where is this going to lead, you know? And then I started worrying again, like, what am I going to do now? You know, like, the movie is over. So I moved on. And I started finding other jobs and, and other people. I don't really remember how I came across it, but uh, my next job was at a uh, working as the assistant to a producer, and he did mostly commercials, American commercials that were filmed here, production services. I'd filmed a movie, but you know, working behind the scenes doesn't pay that well, and you just have to keep working, you know. And I, just, I knew that I didn't know anything. I, I knew that I was just exposed to something and I, I, I knew a little terms and I knew a few things, but I was just barely scratching the surface. You know, it was like the introductory class in the college system, you know, class one of, of you know, 50. And I knew that I was just getting started and I needed to find just more experience. No one really cares if, you, if you're legal in the film industry unless you're on camera. If you, if you don't have papers, you can work behind the camera if you have a skill and you speak Spanish, obviously. Um, they'll just pay you under the table and you won't pay, won't pay taxes. I, I was illegal here for three years before I got my papers because I wasn't, I wasn't acting. I, I worked with that, that production company and it was like four projects, video clips, uh, commercials, but they were, they were big. They were with big people. Uh, I was able to work with Jay Balvin. I was able to work with um, Steve, what's his name? The lead singer of Coldplay. Um, but just people that you definitely, that you look up to and you know and, and you realize who they are and then all of a sudden, boom, you're right there with them. And you're trying to be the most respectful person ever and, and, and you realize that those top dogs are the most humble, are the most nice, caring people you know, they have their teams and they have their people behind them and everything, but they treat them with the utmost respect, you know. And I was working in production, so I was getting all the emails from these people's assistants, you know, like Jay Balvin's assistant or their representative. And they were like, oh, he needs to have um, this kind of water and this kind of berries and this kind of chocolate and this and this and this. Otherwise, he won't show up, you know, but like really like, oh, wow, pushy, pushy. And when I finally met Jay Belvin, he's like, oh no, just, you have any, you have a, like a, this is soda water? Didn't touch any of the other stuff. That was somebody else just trying to be, you know, demanding. Trying to do their job, trying to be really, really special, you know, and trying to make him feel good. But when it comes down to it, you know, just people just want to do their work, you know. And I was able to meet those kind of high, high level people, which was great at some point. And then I realized that um, that's not where, that's not where I wanted to go. You know, commercials are cool and, and it's, it's a whole different setup and the money is great. <laughs> but, um, but no, I did, I realized that it was, you know, I was, I was learning how to work on set and I was familiarizing myself with it, but it wasn't a movie. <laughs> it definitely wasn't a movie. <laughs> you know, it was just a song. It was just a 30 second commercial about selling some something you know and it wasn't inspiring at all the producer that i was working for he went to paris and stayed there for about three months and decided to stay there and i said well if you don't have any work for me i guess i'm done right he's like yeah i'll call you back whenever i come back and you know move, moved on moved on and just started finding different jobs i didn't have a manager and i didn't have that many contacts but um, I was doing a little things here and there, sometimes working as an extra. And the next one was a higher budget for Amazon. It was Narcos versus Zombies. And bigger production, everyone was there and it was great. And it was really gave me the, the impulse. But 2019, right before the pandemic, nothing was coming in. So I took a job in production again. 
I, I took a step back from acting just to, to pay the rent uh -huh. and, and get more experience. And, and I, they told me it was a series and working in a series means you'll be working for eight months. And that sounded like a great way to save some money and get some contacts and meet some people. And funny enough, it was me, it was working again for Apple TV. It was, but it, this time as when Apple was making series. And so I was like, whoa, Apple again, one more time. Mm. But when I moved here, the biggest differences was just that, that activity, you know, that hustle and bustle. It's always moving and going, but it's the simplicity mixed with that as well. The fact that I can walk outside from my apartment up less than a block, and I can sit down, I can have my quesadillas, and I can have my quelites, and I can have my tlacoyos, or whatever, for a super cheap. It's a paradise in terms of the weather, in terms of the food that we have available to us here. After walking the streets for years, and people seeing your face, that's something in the city that, that it's, that's unmistakable that you can get, if you choose to interact, if you choose to be the one that says hello to the baker, just a little hello to the coffee shop lady, hello to the policeman, you know? And then eventually, you know, you'll be walking around, hey, güero, que onda, como estas? How you doing? And it, it just feels like, yes, I'm a part of the city. You know, I'm, I'm not just a, a tourist anymore. I mean, if you look at Mexico and, and you have the chance to travel around, you'll notice that that there's a, there's a term called Pueblo Magico, magical towns, you know, Tepoztlan, Ocotlan. Um, there's these little places that usually have some sort of relationship with the spiritual and the ancestral, you know, the old, the old cultures and the old pyramids and the old people. And if you, if you believe that, then you must believe that this is the magical city. Here, so many people that came here recently during the last eight, 10 months because of that. And I'm like, hey, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm a writer, I'm an actor, I'm a, I'm a this, I'm a that. Um, and uh, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm a, I'm a freelancer and I work for my computer. I'm like, why didn't you stay home? It's because it's not home anymore. Home became, home became threatened. Home became unpeaceful. Home became, you know, uh, just lack of freedom. And, and people found that here, you know, and, and I think that that's something that we can all relate to when, when you feel that ease, you know, it's one thing that everyone always says about Mexico is that everyone feels welcomed here. You know, because everyone would always ask me, John, you should go to LA, you should just go to California, man, you're an American actor, you got the papers, what are you doing here? Here, I just feel the availability of me being able to learn without that pressure and and I know that I can do other things. And that's what I did. I, I, I started getting other jobs, but within the industry. I started looking at all the other areas behind the camera and learning from them and knowing how to react. And that perspective makes me a better, act, better actor because it makes me treat those other people with respect and know what they're talking about, you know? I mean, like a lot of things, it really, really depends on contacts. Yeah. But, but what are contacts? Contacts are people that you decided to talk to. You know, that you went out of your way to talk to this person and present yourself in the proper way and say, hey, this is what I have, this is what I am, this is what I want to be. Biggest project in your life right now? What, 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 uh, about Mike Dosses? Um, I don't know if I would call it a project or a treatment or. A, uh, it's a medical treatment. It's a medical treatment. It's a medical treatment that is. Um, that will definitely have an effect on you spiritually, mentally, physically. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's something that will alter your state of mind, state of being. <clears throat> and and I, I'm, I signed up for it because I heard a lot of great stories. Yeah, I, I have to be honest with you, I, I've never heard about it. Mm. My hypnosis and uh, mushrooms, mm. right? Mm. It's based on a natural 
Mushroom mushrooms. Mushroom mushrooms. So the mushroom specifically is called psilocybin. Um, psilocybin. Psilocybin. P S P S I. Um, and it's a little mushroom, skinny, about this tall, and you can get it in the any market here. You know, any any drug dealer will have them. You know, if if they sell marijuana, they'll sell mushrooms. Um, it's the funny thing about drug dealers. You know, the variety goes from cocaine to methamphetamines to marijuana to this and that, and all of a sudden you'll have at the bottom you'll have the the natural ones, which are the fungi, you know, the mushrooms, the uh, just the, the regular plants and it's a dehydrated mushroom and it's turned into a powder and they put it into a capsule and they mix it with a little bit of cacao powder uh -huh. yeah literally it's still illegal it's still completely illegal in Mexico um, it's legal in only a few states in the United States I think three four only um, and it's a process it's a process to find to find the uh, the solutions but right now is when it's the beta testing time you know before it's legal everyone's trying it out and i'm sure i'm absolutely sure that a few years from now this will be in the pharmacies this will be everywhere this will be available to to us because of this because people like me that are trying it and and sharing the stories about how they feel and how they're what they're accomplishing through it so this treatment is about Switching your state of mind from the negative to the positive. You know, getting rid of getting rid of anxiety and turning it into joy. Getting rid of anger and turning it into love. Getting rid of um, desperation and turning it into um, exaltation. You know, just really being excited about life and 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 ready to connect, as opposed to I'm afraid and I don't have enough. And I don't, I don't know what to do. This is the complete opposite, where it allows you to connect with your true self. In my experience, it's pushed away the ego, and it's pushed away the lazy guy, and it's allowed me to follow through with the first real ideas that come into your mind, which are your true self. My treatment is is um, I have a, they gave me a bottle with 40 pills. And there was three different options. There was one of, uh, I think it was 25, and then there was 30. I mean, the 25, 40, and 60. Um, and they, they, they explained it as, you know, the, the small one is to try it out and get rid of certain things. The middle one is to, is to really, really get focused and, and um, increase your, your availability and your creativity. And the third one, the 60 days, is to really get rid of addictions completely um, to, to fully get rid of alcohol fully get rid of drugs fully get rid of any kind of addiction that you think you have so the idea of psilocybin and the idea of consuming mushrooms is um, it goes way back and when I'm talking about way back I'm talking about millions of years when this planet of ours was created we first had water and then we had a lot of heat and then we had lava and explosions and we had a lot of um, uh, the atmosphere started to change and then the water melted and then we had a lot of um, a lot of the organisms that started to grow were all fungi all little tiny forms of fungi and the fungi was created all over the ground so it's the first real living thing on this planet fungi the fungus and the fungus started connecting and there's a study now of what they call mycelium mycelium is the interconnectivity of all the fungi and all the world so supposedly all the fungi is connected you know from you know from one tip of Europe to the other tip of Europe there's connectivity through the ground because all of the all of the fungi knows each other and the plants talk to each other and when do you think that the the human being start to use this? Ooh, there's a lot of theories. You know? There's a lot of theories, and uh, some of them go back to like 7,000 years ago, the beginning of civilization, you know, when, when we really started to test and try. Is that ancient? Completely. Um, the, the rituals of ancient shamans, um, they, we all know that they got high. They, they mixed herbs. 
and they made teas and they smoked herbs and they smoked all different kinds of stuff and they started seeing things and those things that they saw allowed them to be heard and they started telling things to the rest of their tribe and then their tribe started trusting in them because they were the ones that were connected because they were eating something that was so ancient and so old that literally provided them connectivity with nature so it was very very old there's theories say that um uh, Jesus Christ in the Last Supper. Their theory is that the Last Supper was mushrooms. <laughs> mushrooms to his, to his disciples saying, listen, this is the last story I'm going to tell you, but I'm not going to tell you anything. Here's a little piece of the mushroom. Go right ahead. And there's art in, in chapels, in old parts of, um, in ancient chapels in France and in Spain and in Portugal that show literally fungi intertwined inside of the inside of the chapels and there's pictures ancient pictures from like you know 1100 or 1200 of um of priests going into the into the wilderness with knives and a basket to cut mushrooms right next to the church because it was something that was part of the society it was part of church it was part of religion but at some point they decided to say no not you, because it was a lot of information and they wanted to make a distinction. And if there is a priesthood and you realize that if you take the mushroom, you know more than the priest, then there's no need for the priest. Therefore, the priest said, uh -uh, you can't have this. Only we can have it. Only the priesthood can have it because we want to be the teachers and we want to keep you under control. But now it's available to everyone. They have you already taken your Oh yeah, I'm gonna take my pill every morning with my with my smoothie. It's your fourth? Fourth day. Fourth day. How do you feel? Amazing. Fantastic. Energized. Connected. Um, my mind has never felt clearer. Um, my anxiety has completely evaporated. Um, my ambitions have increased. I don't put anything off. If I have something to do, I do it. I don't say I'll do it tomorrow, I can do it later, not right now. I do it immediately. Yeah. It pops up in my head and there's no, no resistance anymore. Do, don't, don't you feel depressed anymore? It's gone. It's gone. And do you think it's suited to everyone? I can't answer that question. Okay. I, can, I don't think I can answer that question, but um, I definitely recommend it to absolutely everyone. I have no idea how it's going to react with everybody because everybody has a different background. Everybody's been through different things in their lives. Everybody eats differently, exercises differently, sleeps differently, has a different relationship with their family, their wife, their kids. It's definitely not something to be taken lightly. No. It's something that you should really, really consider spiritually. So when you get the brochure and you get the pills and you start reading about everything, they tell you that there's certain things that you need to do or that you should do if you want the effects to increase, if you want to feel more. Um, and those are exercise properly, you know, yoga, stretching, breathing exercises, you know, to alkalinize your body and get your blood flowing better. And a vegan diet, not eating any processed foods, not eating any animal fats, not eating any, any drink, any liquor, any alcohol, no booze. Um, so it's not just take the pill and that's it. You have that's, to do. That's the vaccine. The vaccine. That's oh. the vaccine. No, this is a more of a. It's a process. You have to. Um, you take the pill and you do the work to make the pill work. You know, you have to work with it. Changing habits. Changing habits, and the idea is that you commit to doing this for uh, 25, 40, 50, 60 days, whatever it, treatment you choose. And after that set amount of time on the pill, you change, you develop different habits and you develop a different way of, of living. And therefore, when the treatment is over, the idea is that you naturally follow through okay. without the pill. Do you have to repeat this treatment? You can if you want to, but not. You, you have to take a break. It's like any diet. A diet never lasts forever. Right now, yeah, I think that I'm already I'm already changing in the way that that I see things and the way I treat people and the way that I that I react which is really important the way you react you know? okay
but about the anxiety. Anxiety. It's, it's the, the, the main problem of all actors, right? Yeah, a lot of people. A lot of anxiety is there because you don't, you're always expecting <laughs> that phone call. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's gone. I don't have it anymore. Great. Thank you for telling us your story, mm -hmm. Tom. Thank you very much, Senor. Ha <laughs> <laughs>